Adam, did you allow yourself to enjoy a few beers on Saturday night? Yeah, um, definitely had, had a couple. Um, uh, but yeah, like I say, very quickly Sunday, then you start prepping and, and getting yourself ready for Bromley. Um, you know, it's not in a position where you can, can celebrate too much, but obviously, yeah, getting that first win felt good. But the emotion you showed as well at full time when you speak to us and when you speak speaking to Nick as well. I think when the when the supporters heard that, they could hear how much you really care about this football club and how much you've learned to love it in just a short space of time. Oh, definitely. Like I say, uh, um, you know, it's not. <laughs> Certainly, you put on. I'm, I'm not um, um, someone that can hide my emotions, and um, you know, it's, it's it's honest, and I think that's what you will get from me. And um, yeah, it was uh, a real emotional few weeks, and um, I felt on on Saturday what this club can achieve when you get it right and I you know, felt that the, 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 the fans were uh, fully behind us throughout the game and enjoyed the football that we put on and that's what I want to bring um, to this club on a more regular basis. Have you watched bits of the games back with the players and shown this is what you did, this is why you performed so well at the weekend? No, definitely, yeah, I went through, through some bits. There's, um, I thought it was the first game where I watched it back and thought there's a real nucleus for us to work on. Um, I thought our out of possession stuff was good. Um, we've done a bit of work in that, and you know we showed some good stuff in that. And um, you know, but we, we made some good chances as well. And we we uh, had a bit more possession, and the lads looked a lot more comfortable doing that. Um, so yeah, like I say, I thought it was the first game where it was definitely something to build on for us. And have you noticed a difference on the training ground this week? The change in atmosphere, maybe with the with the players, because you always need that first one as opposed to get a proper full 100% buy-in from them. No, definitely. Um, you know, I, I thought they was with us. Um, you know, I thought even you know the the bad result we had last week. Um, it was a, a few mistakes that at wrong times that cost that as well. You know, we, we knew we was nowhere near at our best, and you know we, we can't get too carried away because it is just one win and we need more. Um, at the same time, like I say, this the spirit's been good. Um, you know, done my history and the, the spirit of 84 that this club um, talks about a lot is is something that we've got to to aspire to, and um, you know that's got to be um, there for us now in the remaining games. You made seven changes on Saturday. Coming off the back, I think it was a five or four. You must be sorely tempted if everyone's fit to make no changes this week. No, that's it. Yeah, I think um, when you lose in the manner we did, no one's place was safe, and. Um, you know, when you win, um, everyone will want to keep their shirt, and that's that's football, and that's how it's got to work. But um, yeah, we've got to look at that. We've got to look at um, injuries, and there's a bit of illness in the camp, so you know we've got to um, see, make sure everybody comes through that, and 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 is available, and who's available, and um, like I say, go down there in good spirit, but know that you know it's, it's one result, and we need more than one result. And I assume if what hadn't happened at home with Will Smith, he would probably have started last Saturday's game as well. Is, is he fit to play this weekend? Is he back at the football club training? Yeah, Will's had a, a, a full um, week of training. Obviously, you know, really bad evening for him. Um, you know, and our thoughts were with him. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's crazy how, how football works. Um, no one has to tell me um, more than that in the last three weeks, but yeah, you know we had to put Ryan at centre back, and I thought he was excellent to be honest. Um, looked really accomplished there, and you know I thought it looked like it had the makings of a good partnership with, with Callum. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll be back available now, um, but like like we've um, touched on already, the, the starting uh, eleven from last week, we want to keep the shirt. Yeah, is that, if it's presuming everyone is fit and well, is that your biggest decision then this weekend, whether he comes straight back in? Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of them. Um, obviously, uh, then coming off the bench and scoring, and you know he'll be uh, missing to, to get out there and, and show what he can do as well. And you know it's been, let's say, really good spirit amongst everybody. We've been working hard, and everybody now knows what's expected um, and the levels they're going to get to to try and get a starting place and I think it's you know, really pushed um, the levels of training up this week. Is Marvin OK? It was his first 90 minutes all season. <clears throat> no, yeah, he um, did feel a bit leggy. We had to keep him off his, off his feet um, on Monday, but you know, he soon recovered and um, 
Yeah, he's you know absolutely fine. He's absolutely loving it. Um, you know, he's uh, said he feels really at home here, and obviously having the kind of home debut like he did, then uh, it helped him settle in very quickly. Is anyone definitely not available this weekend? Um, no one definitely not available. No, obviously other than the, the lads that have been out injured. Um, you know, like I say, there's one or two illnesses going around, and. Um, yeah, there's, uh, I think Dan Batty could make training had a bit of illness with his little one today, so got to see how he is. Um, like I said before, like family's got to come first. He had to be with his, his little one and his wife, but um, or girlfriend, partner. Um, but um, you know, he's he's saying that he'd be available for tomorrow as well, so to travel. So his little one's alright. Uh, God bless, and yeah, we just uh, wish that he gets. You know, home safe and, and he's okay, and then uh, yeah, don't be able to travel with us. But other than that, I think if the, the squad's um, pretty much similar to, to last week. You let Philly Barnes go out on loan to scout until the end of the season. Give us your reasoning behind that. Um, no, just for uh, as the the impact he had. Like I say, it was it was tough. You're trying to judge and rule your eye over everybody, and um, you know it was probably a real. Tough decision to, to judge Finley on that one um, half of football that he had, um, but yeah, just you've got to make those those sort of tough calls in the position we're in, and just felt Mez offered us a little bit more. Obviously, him getting his goal um, as well really helped him, and um, a different type of player. And I just feel we need um, maybe Mez's. Uh, pace and, and power at this this sort of stage, and you know Finley needs to be playing football at the ages at. So um, yeah, it was a, to, to get him out and get him playing um, seemed not the right thing to do. And where he's come from as well, it's what three, four levels below where York City are at the minute. It's, it's, it's a big jump for him, even to go to Scout Athletic. No, yeah, definitely. Um, so I've, the way I look at it, that could be. Um, a good next step for him to go and uh, cut his teeth at that kind of level, I'd like to chuck him in um, into the situation that we're in that I find ourselves in at the moment. Um, you know, it might be a tough ask for, for someone that hasn't really experienced it and I think you know, having lads that have got that bit of experience have been in this position for um, will really help us. Reading speculation this week that Alex Woodyard might be going to Woking, is there any truth in that? No. No, no truth in that. Um, we've had a chat with Woody, he's been quite open and honest and said that, you know, um, the lads that are featured um, are probably going to feature a bit more um, than what Woody is. And, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Woody, the, the, um, the career he's had, um, the, the guy he is, he's a good guy in the dressing room. Um, and, yeah, just thought he'd be respectful to, to be honest with him and just let him know that. And, you know, if he could find um, something elsewhere then you know we'd be open to it um, but you know the window closes next Thursday um, so if nothing comes of that then I know that Woody will give his all between now and the end of the season. How are you getting on with bringing more players if you still want more players into the football club? Um, yeah obviously it's an ongoing thing that we look at um, you know it's it's not a case of just going and, and getting any any player at this sort of stage. Um, we need to make sure our recruitment's um, very thorough and we bring the right characters into the building at, at this sort of stage. So um, yeah, it's not something that we want to rush. We want to you know take our time with and make sure that if there is any incomings in the next week, that they're the right people to come in. And I suppose they've got to be able to hit the ground running more this season than any other season, really, with the fourth Thursday being so late in March and with the season finishing yeah. relatively early in April. No, that's it, yeah. And, um, you know, I knew that Marv would, would do that for us and um, um, really felt that the, the type of player he is um, would be really suited um, into how we want to play. And, um, you know, he's, he's done well and... You know, we need to bring players in that are going to have that kind of impact if, if anything does happen. Did you watch Bromley last night? Um, I watched a bit of Bromley, was flicking between that and the, the Chesterfield game, to be honest, because uh, obviously we got them as well. But, um, you know, yeah, it's focused on Bromley when it went down to, to 10 men so early. Um, obviously, it was nice to, <laughs> to see them work so hard for over an hour, but, um, you know, they're a good, powerful side. It just shows you that they can hold their own with 10 men and uh, they get a lot of confidence from that, having 10 men and and 
been down so early, playing so long. I know um, we had it previously before, and you know it does fill you with a lot of confidence and belief when you can hold on and get a win mm-hmm. with that long. So um, yeah, it's obviously a good result um, in terms of beating Wilson, um, but yeah, like I say, we've got to focus on ourselves and, and know that it's going to be a real tough, tough test uh, come Saturday. Yeah, I've had a, a strange time recent months, really. I think that last time it was only their third win in 12, but they're still third, and there's five clean sheets on the bounce. So they're defending very, very well. No, they are. Um, you know, they've got, got a lot of experience in their back line. Um, so, yeah, we've obviously got to create the chances um, like we did last week and um, be even better because uh, you know I thought we'd create some good chances going some good areas but ultimately we were relying on Len to come off and score from a set piece so you know we've got to be more ruthless and um, you know like I say it was a, a good performance and a good result but we need to improve and be even better uh, this side. Does the playing surface but is there any any sort of issue for that for this set of players? Because I know your your experience down at Worthing yeah. will have played. You play on these surfaces a lot more often than York City do. They only play on it two or three times a year. Is it a huge advantage to the home side being playing on the artificial surface? Um, not always, because um, if, if if that was the case, you know they they would win every game at home. We we tried to prepare as best we could. So we went and trained at the uni today on the on the three G surface. We'll be on three G surface tomorrow to give the players a little taste of of what it might be like um, come Saturday. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it should give you a bit of advantage, but like I say, we try and do our preparation as best we can to make sure that we're ready. What part does it play? Do, do, does anything, do you have to do anything differently when you play on the surfaces rather than say the surface you're going to play at Halifax next week? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a bit of a different service, obviously, watching that game last night. Um, but I think it's just the ball speed, it moves a lot quicker. Um, if anything, you can um, you know, trust the pitch a little bit more, um, so you can trust your first touch. And you know, We're hoping that, um, you know, having seen the lads play on it, the, the 3G today, they, they were moving the ball quickly and had a lot of trust in the surface, so um, we're hoping it will, will help our game. This next couple of games, obviously on paper they, they look they look really tricky, but I'm sure if someone now was to offer you, I don't know, two points out of six, three points out of six, would you snap their hands off? Um, yeah, I think it's important just to focus on Saturday and we come away from Bromley, like I say, to, uh, collecting something. Um, you know, it's a real tough place to go. I think we've got to make sure that um, we've got three home games, three away games now. We've got to make our home form it needs to be a fortress and then you know if we can get points away from home that would be a bonus but yeah we've got to make sure that we're leaving Bromley with, with, with something um, in our pockets to come home with. And you're at the point of the season now where as soon as the game does finish you're on your phone looking at the other schools and seeing how everyone else has got on? Um, not Saturday, I try to enjoy it a little bit longer and you know not do that but yeah it's definitely getting to that sort of time and you know people make you aware very quickly how the other results have gone but um, you know we've just got to focus on ourselves, got to keep on believing in what we're doing and you know like I say I've really felt that uh, this week in training but um, you know we've got to take it and to, to, to Saturday and like I say make sure that we, we come away with something. Thank you. Cheers. Hi Adam, uh, after Saturday's win, that must have felt like a collective weight off of your shoulders. Um, yeah, a little bit. I did, did really enjoy it, um, but you know, I enjoy winning games of football, and um, you know that's why I come to York City for. Um, I want to experience that on a more regular basis, and you know, it was made even more special for how good the the fans were. Obviously, you can score in so such late on gives everyone a bit of a lift, and this. Um, such a good time, but you know, with that was said and done, it could have been so different if the lad had scored from a long throw at the end. So, you know, I know that we can't switch off and um, you've got to stay focused, but yeah, really, really enjoyable win. That's your first full week of training now with the players. What does that sort of look like for you? Do you, do you have like set plans out for certain days when you have a full week of training? No, yeah, just um, sort of Monday was obviously a recovery for one or two, and then we give one or two a little bit more, and then trained together as a team on Tuesday, showed some of the analysis, that the work that Cam does. Um, so, yeah, just focus on our shape and, like I say, I thought Saturday was a good nucleus um, for us to work on. I enjoyed watching the game back and felt there was um, a 
good uh, base defensively and you know we created some chances but um, you know, we've got to be a bit more clinical when we're uh, in the final third. Looking at your team news for Saturday, Adam Crooks and Scott Burgess, are they any close to a turn? Yeah, so both is brilliant to see. Um, who do we have? So we had obviously a training group and then we had I think Callum Harriet, Liam Gravata, um, Crooksy and Burgess all with their boots on. So that was really nice to see. Um, I think Burgess will probably be going back in training next week and Crooksy probably the following week. So I can't see them being available until um, after the bank holiday. Carl Harris, he's been out since the Rochdale game, I believe. Um, how has he been progressing then? Because we haven't really heard much about him recently. No, yeah, just um, I think his strength's down a little bit in the hamstring. Obviously, he's had a few setbacks with with it in the past, so he's one that we're desperate to get back, but at the same time, we've got to be really careful with. Um, you know, the last thing we want is for him to come back too early and aggravate any, any old injury. Uh, you go keep situation last Saturday as well with the conflict of Rory Watson or Joe Sides Ken Wigot. First of all, Rory Watson, how, how impressed were you with his performance? Yeah, I thought he, thought he was excellent. Um, you know, he's a really top guy to have in the dressing room. He keeps spirits high, but he knows when to switch and to go into focus mode and get get the lads and make sure they're training properly as well, which I really like. Um, so I think we've got two excellent goalkeepers in the building. Uh, really see bright future for both of them and um, obviously Rory being a, a local York lad as well, you can see how much it meant to him and delighted he kept a clean sheet. Have you been pleased with the reaction from George Hatz Kenworthy in training to his response to being dropped? Yeah, no, he was obviously very disappointed still last week, so we've had to you know, take time with him and, and spend a lot of time with him and um, feel like this week he's trained really well. Um, and, you know, he's got to say, it's great from my point of view to have two very good um, goalkeepers pushing each other. Looking at Bromley, uh, five clean sheets in the last five games, how do you go about finding a way to break that down and get some goals on the, on the board? Um, no, yeah. Uh, obviously a tough team to, to play against, we, we, we focus on, on what we can do and the areas that we can potentially um, cause them some, some problems but I said a very, especially at home, very very solid and a tough team to sort of break down, we've, we're going to have to be patient, we've got to be, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult but we've got to go there with some belief as well that we can do it. Andy Woodman, their, go uh, their goalkeeper, their manager. Uh, have you any past interactions with him? Uh, no, not really. Just, um, you know, since he's gone into Bromley, what an excellent job he's done. Um, I think he's been in and around the sort of playoffs and the, the, the higher uh, regions of the league since he's gone in there. And, um, you know, it's, it's nothing but admiration for the job he's done. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to come up against him on Saturday. The under-19s reaching the National League Football Academy League Cup final. Uh, sorry, a bit of a mouthful there. Yeah. Uh, how pleased do you see sort of the younger players of, of this group doing really well for themselves and performing to a high standard? No, I'm really pleased to travel up with uh, the lads on the mini bus yesterday uh, on my day off. Went up to Blythe and my first time travelling up that far. Um, took a bit of a picture to show the family how north I was, but um, you know, I'm really, really pleased and encouraged with. Um, how well they played. Um, they got some real good talent in their, their ranks there, and um, you know it's, it's nice to, to to cast my eye over them and, and you know for them to get to a final. It's brilliant for the club. Um, like I said, just said to them before the game, I want them to really embrace it being a semi-final and a big game, and you know that's what we want to bring to this club on a more regular basis. Uh, those big games and getting to finals, and um, you know that's something that I want them to relish. In, in your past job with Worthy, have you ever had um, sort of any experiences of bringing a camera players into the first team? Um, yeah, very, uh, a lot to be honest. Um, I, part of my full-time role at Worthy was to take the under-19, so you know, I could see them firsthand who the ones were not just technically ready, but I think it's also for a young player come through to see, you know, um, and mentally they might be ready to, to step up as well and uh, you know it's good these the lads up here that put on a Yorkshire they uh, really sort of do embrace that and their spirits 
really good and um, you know they, they were certainly up for that game yesterday which was really encouraging to see but yeah I, uh, part of um, what I like to do is, is give youngsters opportunity I think in previous years I've not been afraid to give 16 year olds opportunities if they feel they're ready and mentally ready for it um, and I want that to be no different here I want to work with the young local talent um, went Saturday morning to, to see some of the youth teams play and the 13s and on the 15s play so something that I want to try to um, uh, eventually in the summer get across and get sort of playing philosophy throughout the club and I want to see um, lads come into this, this club uh, from a young age and, and make it all the way through. Um, it's been a while since the club's done that and it's something I'm really keen to, to bring back. And last one from me, uh, Xander Saziba is doing very well out on loan at Blythe Spartans. I think he's got three goals when I say he's lost three games. Uh, have you been keeping a close eye on his progress? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so, something that we'll um, definitely have to look at. Um, I think his potential for a recall is tomorrow. Um, his 28 days are up, so you know, we have to look at uh, our realness and stuff that we've got. And, um, you know, we're not overly blessed with goal scoring options um, at the moment and, and Zander can score goals. Um, I think he got three and seven in his um, time at the club early on in the season. He's got three goals now out on loan, so it's definitely one we've got to consider. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Hi Adam. Hi Adam. Um, you won on Saturday with that fearless, dynamic style. How important is that uh, to, for self-belief for the players so that they don't retreat from that and they move on to Bromley in the same way? No, yeah, I think it was um, really important for confidence. Um, you know, you could see um, how confident the, the players were and you can definitely see it in, the, in their training this week. Um, you know, they, they look comfortable dealing with the ball now and, um, you know, the more we train them and, and you know, give them that belief that this is the way we want to play and we can win games of football, um, you know, the more you get that buy-in and you know, I definitely felt that this week. You mentioned you need to be more clinical. Um, how important is it to get deeper back to firing on all full cylinders and some of his early season four? Oh yes, um, you know, really important for us that. Um, you know, six games to go, he needs to be and have that pressure of being our main talisman and you know look forward to it and embrace that because um, he certainly can can do that for us um, but yeah we've, we've got some good firepower in, in the team and it's important that we're hoping Len gets a lot of confidence from his goal I think he's up to 10 goals now as well so he's catching Dippo up as well so you know we've got Will Davis as well who's trained really well this week um, you know obviously disappointed not to get on the pitch but you know all you ask is that you train as hard as you can if you're not in the side and you know he's certainly done that as well so yeah we're hoping that all of our, our four players can, can contribute and you know we need defenders and midfielders to, to chip in as well not just Dippo. Looking at Bromley uh, you look at someone like Michael Cheek he's been responsible or involved in a third of the, all of their goals and scored 19 himself how do you counter that threat? Um, yeah obviously you know be foolish to, to not look at that, that goal threat and um, you know he's done it over a number of years. Um, I think even Gary said that he's played against Michael Cheek before so um, knows first hand about how he plays but um, yeah we, we showed him a little bit but you don't want to panic him or worry him too much and like so I like to focus more on, on what we can do as well. Um, you know, obviously we've got utmost respect for, for Bromley and all their players and how they play. Um, but at the same time, we can't take our eye off of what, how we want to implement our, uh, our game plan as well. And you mentioned last night they had to play you know, most of the game with 10 men. Um, the rest for your squad will be important, will it? And it has been, I guess, over the last week. No, yeah, definitely getting the sort of balance right. Um, so just because it was our first full week, we couldn't hit them with a really heavy week because, you know, we've got four weeks after the season as well that we need to consider as well. So, you know, it's getting that balance right, but that's where we've got good staff at the football club. Um, we've sort of uh, made sure that we sort of hit the right numbers, get the right sprints in and get the right load into the players. Um, 
but at the same time we need to also do some work as well. Um, so I think we've got that balance right this week, but like I say, they can take a lot of confidence. They played over 60 minutes with 10 men and won the game. So, um, you know, they would have put a lot of effort into that, but at the same time, they'll also get a lot of confidence from it as well. And with regards to the transfer deadline, um, do you find that it's a barrier with the fact that you have so-called rich owners? Do people bump the price up? Are you finding that an additional barrier to recruiting people? Um, a little bit. <laughs> no, I, no, I think it's... Um, Something that we um, got to be cautious of, but we've got to stick to within our rooms as well, you know, um, and make sure that we're getting the players in on the right, right for the right price and, and paying them the right wage. I think moving forward, um, that's going to be really important. Um, so, yeah, it's not a case of. Um, we're just going to go and, and spend. Um, you know, we've got, like I say, the, the character of the player at this this time is really crucial for us. And there'll be a healthy following down to Bromley with York City fans. What's your message to them? Um, no, yeah, just we're so keen to put right um, our last away journey that they come and followed us in good numbers and. Um, we want to sort of really build on the spirit that was shown in, in Saturday's home game and uh, you know, we really want to give them something to, to cheer and yeah, just to, to come and get behind us like they always do and it's down to us to, to, to do the business for them. Um, but yeah, the, the support way from home has been superb and you know, I'm really looking forward. I think I've got about 20, 30 family all coming up to the game, so they'll all be in with the York fans as well. And uh, yeah, I really want to give them a taste of what big club this is I've come to. And on social media this week, there has been an awful lot of goodwill towards you. That must be good. I honestly wouldn't know. Um, just try to, to stay away from it. Um, you know, like I say, I'm not, um, I think I've come in and just been completely honest from day one. Um, I know the first few games it wasn't good enough and I know that it's down on me to, to get it right and I'll take the criticism for that and um, you know what we want to do is just I won't change keep being honest keep putting myself in this position and just going to work as hard as I possibly can because um, I really feel that this this club has got the makings to be something really special and you know I want to be the one to take it there good luck for Saturday thank you Adam, um, has training felt any different this week uh, off the back of last Saturday's win? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, like Marv said, it uh, feels like a bit of a different club that he, he walked into last week to, to, to this week. So um, that's obviously quite nice to hear. And you can definitely see that they're playing with some confidence. Um, in training today, some of the football that they was putting together was, was really exciting to watch. And, um, you know, really hoping that they're starting to sort of like me telling them and showing them the clips but they're starting to believe it I think it's uh, the, the most important thing. Ronnie Watson gave a good account of himself last Saturday does that mean he gets a nod this week? Um, yeah he's certainly done brilliant um, you know I think George has trained excellent this week they've both been pushing each other really well um, but you know him coming in doing so well keeping a clean sheet I think he had a shaky start where he, he dropped one but then recovered after that superbly well so you know yeah Rory and George we've got two fantastic keepers that are really pushing each other uh, day, day, day by day. The squad's still very large. Um, has every, every player got a part to play, thinking about Tyler Cardner and Charlie Allen? Yeah, Tyler's one of the lads that has been missing through, through illness. Um, Charlie Allen's away with Northern Ireland at the moment, and I think his uh, loan might be pretty much up now. So, um, yeah, like I say, it's, it's all hands on deck. We need everyone um, ready to go. Um, so, yeah, we've got a I said take the, the illness and everything that's been going around the camp and into consideration. Um, but at the same time, yeah, everyone's got to, if they're training well, then put themselves in, into contention. Marvin Armstrong came in last week full of confidence. That seemed to spread uh, through the team. You must have been pleased with his debut. Yeah, it certainly was. I knew, obviously, I know, know Marv. Um, he's, he's one that I sort of took time with in, in the summer and done some sort of one-to-one -one sessions with and then he uh, got his move to um, to Barnet. Um, so 
I knew that his work rate and his attitude would be infectious around the place and you know I thought at times he really sort of set the press off for everybody and everybody followed suit. I thought the middle of the pitch we turned over a lot of ball, um, you know, any ball that went centrally. Um, it seemed to be a red shirt getting on the end of it and you know Marv was, was a big part of that. Any injury concerns for, for this Saturday in team selection? Not, not injury wise. Um, Fully fit, just a, like I say, a bit of illness. Uh, Danny Amos and Tyler have reported a little bit, so we're just waiting to see how everybody comes through. Um, yeah, and um, we're hoping that it shouldn't affect uh, the squad too much.